Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to talk about manipulation and a person named Saul Alinsky. It's a name you might have heard. Um, and the rules that came along from him. We're going to do this because the other day I posted a video to Twitter, tweeted out a video, and, you know, it's, let's talk about whatever the title of the video was. And somebody replied with, let's talk about you. And it had a little thumb or a little finger pointing down, and it had an image. And it appears to be a, a newspaper clipping. I don't know if it actually is, but that's what it looks like. And the headline is, Beware the Useful Idiots. I guess that's me. I'm the useful idiot here. And uh, the article, I guess, it says, Recall that Hillary did her college thesis on his writings. And Obama writes about him in his books. Saul Alinsky died about 43 years ago, but his writings influenced those in political control over our nation today. And it goes on, and it gives uh, some biographical information, and it mentions his book, Rules for Radicals. Anyone out there think that this stuff is happening in today in the U.S., all eight rules are currently at play. There are eight levels of control that must be obtained before you're able to create a social state. The first one is health care. Control health care and you control the people. Poverty. Increase poverty level as high as possible. Anybody who's familiar with Alinsky is already laughing, right? Um, Goes on, debt, increase the debt to an unsustainable level, gun control, welfare, education, religion, class warfare, so on, so on, so on, right? The useful idiots have destroyed every nation in which they have seized power and control. It is presently happening at an alarming rate in the U.S. That's wild. That's wild, especially if you've ever read Alinsky, because this... It is a giant uh, plan for the haves to control the have-nots, which is the exact opposite of what Alinsky wrote about. He wrote about ways for the have-nots to obtain power for themselves so they could advocate for themselves. It's literally the exact opposite. This isn't Alinsky's work. It's, it's just not. Um, his rules for radicals, it's stuff like uh, power isn't what you have. It's what they think you have. It's stuff like that. I've read it. Um, it wasn't, to me, I didn't see it as like amazing, to be honest. Uh, but then again, it also really wasn't written for me. Most of the stuff that it talks about seems like it might be more applicable to urban areas. Uh, not a whole lot of help for me. Not something that really spoke to me. But worth reading, no doubt. But here's the thing. Why was this written? Why did somebody take Saul Alinsky, Rules for Radicals, and then attach these power structures to it? It goes back, um, I, I found references to this type of scapegoating of Alinsky, going all the way back to like Newt Gingrich days, right? Um, it was a way to signal European socialism. Alinsky's from like, Chicago, I think. Um, but that, that was what it was there for. It, it was there to give the conservative base, Republicans, a boogeyman. Somebody to, to fear this, this name that sounds scary, rules for radicals. And it was meant to, well, scare people. And then, once they had them scared, they could feed them stuff that was literally the exact opposite of what he wrote. And use that to demonize whoever they attached to it. So, in essence, it was basically a form of propaganda that they could count on people to share without really knowing the cause or the true intentions of it, because it just sounded scary, right? 
Um, that habit is still very alive today. I mean, and not just because somebody posted this. I would point out that this has been debunked for years. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's still very common to take a term, a name, a term, demonize it, and then attach it to people the way they did in this article, this purported article. You know, they wrote college theses about it. It was mentioned in their books. This is this horrible stuff, but none of that is actually the person, right? But it doesn't matter because you tie it together, you create that association, and you create that propaganda, and then people will spread it without really knowing what it is. Here, one last thing. In political jargon, a useful idiot is a derogatory term for a person perceived as propagandizing for a cause without fully comprehending the cause's goals and who is cynically used by the cause's leaders. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.